Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending July 18th. First up, thank you Tim M. and NT8 for sending this in. Tom, this is from the Daily Mail. Is a mini ice age on the way? Scientists warn the sun will go to sleep in 2030 and could cause temperatures to plummet. This is a new theory about the sun cycles now. We uh, we pretty much know that there's a regular type of cycle that goes every 11 years, but there are a lot of sub-cycles too and trying to tease them out so you can figure out when the sun will take a period of time to go into a uh, low activity cycle such as the mini ice age we had in the early 1700s. Well, I'll read a little from the article here. The new model of the sun's solar cycle has produced unprecedentedly accurate predictions of irregularities within the sun's 11-year heartbeat. It draws on dynamic effects in two layers of the sun, one close to the surface and one deep when it's in its convection zone. Predictions from the model suggest that solar activity will fall by 60% during the 2030s and conditions last seen during the mini ice age that began in 1645. This was Professor Valentina Sharkova at the National Astronomy Meeting in Landedno, that's in Wales. The model predicts the pair of waves become increasingly offset during cycle 25, which peaks in 2022. During cycle 26, which covers 2030 to 2040, the two waves will become exactly out of sync, and this will cause a significant reduction in solar activity. Evidently, they checked this new modeling against uh, past sun abnormalities, and it tracks pretty good to what the, uh, the model tracks pretty good to what the evidence actually shows. Now, you still need a little bit more time. It's one single study by one person, so, but if they do have it uh, down accurate, it would be interesting to see if by the year 2030, the sun actually does go into a minimum again, and we have to uh, suffer through some uh, summers that are more like winter than they are summer. So next up here, this I was talking about last week on the TDD report that I was hoping somebody would tear apart the GoPro session that I call the GoPro Cube. Well, somebody actually did. This is from, uh, let me scroll up here, I fix it. And somebody actually did tear into the GoPro Hero. They found out that there's one replaceable part, basically, and the battery's not replaceable, but you can actually take some screws out and replace the lens cover. Other than that, they uh, heated it up and stripped off the rubber outer casing, and from there on to get inside it, basically, you'll need some kind of a cutting tool or a Dremel to get inside it from there, so it's not exactly a repairable camera. But it, they show it in uh, photo by photo in here. I'll show you just a, a quick shot of it here where you can see when they stripped off the rubber thing, you can see inside that it has a clear case that lets you see inside. And then from there on, basically, they just cracked it open, tore it apart, and showed the parts. So for a $399 camera, there isn't a lot repairable on it. Uh, basically, you're looking at the fact that if you scratch the front cover that covers the lens, you can replace that. But anything besides that or if the battery tends to go bad in a short period of time, you're just pretty much out of luck. You have a $399 paperweight after that. So anyway, I thought that would be interesting if you want to check that out. And third up, I was going to show you some pictures of Pluto's uh, Pluto and the moon Charon. So here are the pictures. As I put them up here, I will describe them. This first picture is the picture of Pluto in the foreground and then Charon in the background. And then you can also see in the Pluto picture the heart-shaped feature. Well, in the next photo here, you can see a green area where they actually scanned the heart-shaped feature. And what they found in the heart-shaped feature is it's frozen carbon monoxide. And I didn't say that wrong. It's carbon monoxide, not like frozen carbon dioxide, which is on Mars. So that's fairly interesting. They used a special scanner to be able to determine that. And next picture here we have of the moon Charon. And if you look in the... Uh, yellow rectangle there in the upper left part that's the mountain in the moat that they talk about so um, they're still trying to figure out how that possibly happened uh, a mountain and an impact crater somehow sandwiched together so that's something they need to explain and then the next picture is a picture of the mountains uh, near the equator in Pluto and these mountains are as high as 11,000 feet so um, that's kind of cool too and they think they're mostly ice mountains at least that's their guess I haven't seen any results from the scan or anything like that, but if you want more pictures, I'll have the links to these two um, sites. Then they have uh, some interesting slideshows, but if you want to see even more pictures than that, all you basically have to do is just go into Google Search or Google Search Images and type images of Pluto because they're being published.
published all over the uh, web, and they're going to be for probably years to come because there's another, as I said, year and a half that they're going to be getting information back from this uh, New Horizons probe. And as more information comes back, the pictures will be better quality. So anyway, I'm going to keep it short this week. I'm going to be keep it a little under six minutes just so it uh, moves along a little bit faster. But thank you for everybody that contributed to this week's show, and I will catch you next week.